Do you panic when getting shot at? Do you wish you knew how to react when taking fire? Then stick around, soldier, because I'm going to share with you what I call the Identify, Assess, and React system, which, just, combined I, with a little I bit of luck, might help like, you get out of some bad situations in Hell Let Loose. When you start taking fire in Hell Let Loose, the very first thing you want to do is identify where the incoming rounds are coming from. The enemy. Okay, this first one is obvious. Sometimes you can actually see the enemy who's firing at you. This is the most ideal situation because you can pinpoint exactly where they are, which gives you a decent shot at fighting back. You can keep an eye out for muzzle flashes and pixels that are scratching their ass, and there's a decent chance that that's who's firing at you. Tracers. Sometimes you won't actually see the enemy, but you will see incoming tracer rounds. These are highly visible and essentially draw a line between you and the enemy, so they can be really useful for pinpointing the direction from which you're taking fire. Bullet impacts. Occasionally, you can tell where you're taking fire from by watching the bullets impact the terrain or objects nearby. So let's say you're in a trench facing north and you see a couple bullet impacts on the left hand wall of the trench. This means that you're taking fire from your right side which would be from the east. Hit indicators. Some people don't even realize this, but when you're hit and hell let loose, you do actually get a subtle hit indicator on screen to help you see where you're being shot from. In this clip, you'll notice a faint Sorry, red crescent shape uh, appear on the screen from the direction of the incoming fire after I'm hit. So get into the habit of paying attention to this clue. You also want to use auditory clues to reinforce and pinpoint the direction of incoming fire. Having a decent headset or surround sound system can really help with the directional audio of the game and improve your ability to use these audio clues to your advantage. Keep in mind, you don't need to know exactly which building or hedgerow you're being shot at from, just a general direction. It's somewhere in that region there, based on the bullet impacts and the sound. Yeah. The quicker you can identify that general direction, the better. Now once you've figured out the general direction of incoming fire, the next step is to assess the threat. If the enemy just popped around the corner in an alleyway you're in, no further calculation necessary. Just start force feeding that bastard some bullets. But if they're a distance away from you, you'll want to try and figure out what you're up against. If you're hearing a single crack with a couple seconds between each shot, you're most likely dealing with a bolt-action rifle. While these rifles are generally a one-hit kill, a missed shot means you have a couple of seconds to scramble before you can expect a follow-up shot. So try to use that to your advantage. Semi-automatic rifles are one of the most difficult to evade as they're basically as lethal as a bolt action but can be fired as fast as the shooter can pull the trigger. So unlike a bolt action rifle, a missed shot with a semi-auto means a follow-up shot is coming right behind it. One hit with most rifles in the game and you're probably dead. SMGs like the Thompson and MP40 aren't as accurate or lethal at range so they'll need to be used in short bursts to connect with a few shots in order to take you out. The distance between you and the shooter becomes an important factor in how to best react to these weapons. The STG and BAR are quite similar to the semi-automatic rifle. They're almost as accurate at range and only take one or two hits to kill, depending on the range. They have a fair amount of recoil of shot and burst or full auto, and that can buy you a split second here or there, but suppression effects are pretty significant with these weapons. Then of course there's the absolute pleasure of taking fire from a heavy machine gun. When under fire from one of these beasts, you'll definitely know it. The rate of fire and sheer number of bullets flying your way will make that abundantly clear. And keep in mind, sometimes you're going to take fire from multiple enemies, which can be pretty overwhelming. Now once you've assessed the threat and have I a decent idea of what you're up against, you'll need lines. to quickly react accordingly. Nice. Now the best way to react really depends on a combination of factors, a couple of which you've already determined at this point. From where are you taking fire and from what? Most of the other factors come from your surroundings. Are you behind cover? Are you out in the open? Is there any form of concealment or cover nearby? Are there any teammates nearby? These are some yeah, of the things that will inform here, your next moves. 
Now, every situation is unique, but here are some general rules of thumb to follow for some different scenarios you might find yourself in. If cover is immediately available, get behind it as quickly as possible. If necessary, bandage yourself. Don't peek out from the same spot you entered the cover. You can bet your ass the enemy is going to have you dialed in and ready to pick you off. Once you've repositioned, peek out and return fire if you feel you can win the gunfight. If you don't feel confident you can win, you can look for nearby areas that you could possibly retreat to. If you have smoke grenades, pop some smokes to give you some concealment before moving. If the enemy's close enough, don't be afraid to throw a couple of frags their way. If nothing else, it'll distract them or cause them to displace. And keep in mind, you may have teammates nearby that can help you out. Don't hesitate to call out to them in local chat to help you out if you're pinned down. I can run for it if you want to cover me and see if you c I can draw him out. Now if no cover is immediately available when you start taking fire, quickly scan your surroundings for the closest possible cover. Run to that cover in as unpredictable a manner as possible. Use random and spastic movement to avoid being an easy target. Do not immediately lay down unless it puts you behind some form of defilade or visual obstruction between you and the enemy. This is probably the most common mistake people make. They instinctively hit the dirt to make themselves a smaller target, and now you're a stationary or at least a very slow moving target. In other words, you're an easy kill. As mentioned before, once behind cover, don't peek out from the same area you entered cover if at all possible. Move left or right or find a new spot to peek out from before returning fire. If you're taking fire, that means the enemy got the jump on you. And if you can become unpredictable and take away that advantage they thought they had, you're in a better position to fight back. Now, when you do peek out to return fire, you're going to want to do what's known as slicing the pie. This means slowly inching around the edge or axis of your source of cover to slowly unveil small slices of the enemy's position. The incremental and methodical movement exposes a different section of the area as it enters your field of vision. With each lateral step, as you continue to move, you'll be able to see more and more of the enemy's position. With each sliver of the position cleared, you gain another slice of the pie. Make sure you're focused and ready to pull the trigger should the enemy enter your sight as you gain that that next slice of the pie. Also, be ready to retreat back into cover should the enemy have your position dialed in. Oh, and here's a pro tip. If you're playing against the Germans, you can hear the hissing sound of their grenades when they pull the fuse just before throwing them. If you're behind cover and the enemy pops the fuse, peek out quickly and shoot them. You might even get them before they get the grenade off. Of course, all of the things I just covered in this video happen in only a few seconds time, so I totally understand that this is all easier said than done. Even if you follow this advice, you may still end up on the losing end of a firefight. You can't win them all. However, putting these tactics into practice will absolutely improve your odds of not only surviving incoming fire, but coming out on top in the end. So remember, when you start taking fire, identify, assess, and react. And a quick prayer to Trap32 certainly never hurts. The identify, assess, and react system is only a small piece of the puzzle. So if you want to continue to improve your combat effectiveness as a whole, check out my How to Flank the Enemy video next. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button or leaving a comment. And if you'd like to see more content from me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click that bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And I hope to see you in the next one.